All right, welcome back and congratulations on making it halfway through OneDrive. Uh, this lesson is all about version history. So we've created files, we've moved them around, we've shared them with other people, but now we're trying to figure out how to work with versions, both those that we've created ourselves and those that might have resulted from co-authoring with other people. So I'm going to start out just at my top level OneDrive here, and I have this annual financial report that I've been working on with a colleague. And I'd like to be able to go back and compare a previous version to its current state. Luckily, it's a pretty easy process. I just click on the ellipsis next to the file name, which always means more options. We'll see the ellipsis everywhere in Microsoft 365. And I choose version history. Okay, version history pops up here and I can see, oh, okay, version one, so the original file was created by Megan and then Diego made some changes and then I made some changes and it gives me timestamps. I'm not seeing a whole lot of information right here, but for each of these versions, I could say, oh, I wanna restore absolutely to version one. I don't even need to see it. I just know I wanna restore that version. So I could do that. I could also open version one. If I just want to see what it looked like, I click open. It wants to open in the desktop version, which is kind of a departure from what we've seen so far. So we let that open. There we go. And once it's open, it gives me the option to compare this version to the current version or restore it. If I just look at this and I'm like, yep, that's the one, I click restore. But let's see what compare does. There we go, and I'm going to make that full screen. I know there's a lot going on here. <laughs> uh, but it does show from the version that you chose, so version 1 to the, the current version, it's showing you a list of revisions on the left. So Megan inserted, Megan deleted, and then the compared document. So it's showing me a little bit of markup there as well. So I can remember I was working on, with these parts with Diego. And then the original and the revised. So what, no matter where I'm at in the document, it's showing me that same position on, the, on each version, the first and the current. So maybe I figured out what I needed to know and I can just close out this comparison. I'm not gonna save it anywhere and I'm not gonna restore that version. I'm just gonna close out of everything. So let's say version two, however, let's say I went ahead and did the same thing. I opened it, it's the one that I want. I know I need to restore. All I do is use the ellipsis from version history on the correct version and choose restore. Now, the nice thing about it is it doesn't delete version two. It doesn't move version two or anything. So from an auditing perspective, it's really nice that it keeps the sequence of one, two, three, four. And now five just happens to be basically a copy of version two. So now I've got five versions of that file. So I could keep showing you stuff uh, from this panel, but I wanna show you something a little bit different. So you may remember earlier in the course when we were inside of a document, we could actually access the version history uh, without leaving. So here I am in the current version of the document that I just restored. Remember this was version two then in that case. And I can expand the title bar up here and choose version history. So what I like about this and why I like it a little bit more than what we just looked at is it's not gonna open you know, the, the desktop version of Word or more Windows or anything. It's just really simple. So I can see the original file, modified and renamed. I can see Diego made some changes one hour ago and it shows me in markup what those were. So he added one, two, three, made some more changes a little later and I can scroll down, see he deleted the one, two, three and added some content here, looks like. And then both of us made some changes together when we were co-authoring. So then I can go down and look for the markup there. Very nice. Great. All right, so I, I can go through, you can see pretty quickly, version by version, and see what changed from one to the next. And with each of those previous versions, I can restore or save a copy. So it's a little bit different than the desktop version where I could compare. Um, instead, it's saying, do you want to make this a separate file, this specific version right here, or make this the current version of the file. Now, something else that you're noticing here in this Word doc is that show changes is on by default. So I didn't have to turn on version history or track changes, but it did it for me. And if I don't wanna see that markup like that, I just toggle that off. And now I'm seeing the document as it is in that version and I don't have to worry about the markup. Okay, so I'll leave that on and let's say I'm done and I don't need to make any changes. I didn't want to restore anything or save any copies. So I'm going to go back to the document. All right, something else I like here, you know, especially when you're co-authoring and sharing that edit privilege with someone else, version history is nice, but I also like this catch up feature. 
Ketchup allows you to see anything that you might have missed between versions. Now, I'm all caught up in this case, but let's say I'm not. Let me close out of here, and let's say Diego actually opens up that file, and he's making some changes while I'm not in there. Okay, and when he's done, he's just going to close out, knowing that those changes are saved. And now Megan's going to, let's just go and refresh for good measure and open that file. And now notice the catch up thing here shows me that Diego made some changes. And I can click on that and it walks me through it and says, oh, Diego right here made an edit just now. And click on that it highlights the entire change. So it counted both lines as one in this case. But if there were more, I'd see more blue dots and I could click on that to highlight the, the items that were changed. All right, and then back in OneDrive, something else I like is when you simply just hover over a document, uh, you do see a little bit of activity, how many viewers it has, how many views it has, so I can see I viewed it and Diego viewed it. And of course, we've been primarily working on it together. I can also see any emails that were sent when I was sharing this file. So notice the first time I shared it with Diego, here's the email that was sent, so I can look at that and get that link if I want to or forward it again. Um, another email to Diego when I shared it differently. And then with me, Patty, and Adele when I shared it with them for the first time. And then I can also see the views up here. I've got it down at the bottom, but if I click on the 10 views at the top, it gives me a graphical representation off to the side. Now I can't see who viewed it here, so I do need to hover over that document if I want to see specific names down here. Uh, but if you click it, you do get that nice graphic representation too. So the last thing I want to talk about here is when you would delete a version. So once again, I'm going to click on the ellipsis next to a file and choose version history. And then notice I've got six versions here. Now, a good use case here, if you want to delete a version, is basically going to be if there's a version in here somewhere that contains sensitive information. Uh, sometimes before somebody has proper training, they may post a document that they intend to be used as a template out on their site, or maybe they share it from OneDrive, but they give edit access. And let's imagine this form that they're posting out there is like a direct deposit update form. And so somebody from your company clicks on the link that was shared, and they make changes to the live version. Because uh, maybe the, the consumer also doesn't have the proper training to be able to recognize that, oh, this is the live template version, so I should have downloaded it. Right, so there, there's two possible ways that that could have been avoided, but let's say both were missed. Um, so this person is putting in their actual uh, routing number, their checking account number, their social security, or maybe employee ID on this form that everybody else in the company can access too. And in that case, of course, we want to mitigate that as, as quickly as possible. So step one, either restore a previous version that didn't have that person's information in it, or just remove their um, information from that form to create a new version. And then you want to make sure you go and find the version that they modified, so the one that they put their info into, select it, and delete that version. And you're not finished there. After you delete it, you also need to delete it from the recycle bin. So we'll talk more about the recycle bin later in this chapter, um, but just make sure that you at least double delete any version that contains sensitive information. And you may have other reasons to delete versions, but that's the one that comes to the forefront of my mind when I'm thinking about a use case for that. So with that, we were finished up with version history. I'll see you in the next lesson.